ExxonMobil's investor meeting is May 26. The company facing increasing activist pressure. Of course, Engine One, the activists in question, with support some from pension funds seeking four board seats. Joining us now is a CNBC, in a CNBC exclusive is Darren Woods, the chairman and CEO of ExxonMobil. Darren, it's great to have you back. Uh, and I do want to start off on, uh, you know, what's less than two weeks away now, that shareholder vote on, on your board nominees, because this morning we got a report from ISS, the uh, influential proxy advisory firms, um, and they're in, they're in support of three of the of four dissidents. Uh, let me read this to you and, and get your response, if I can. Uh, they say uh, in their conclusion that additional board change is needed to provide shareholders with sufficient confidence in the sustainability of Exxon's business, an immediate concern, and one that should arguably take precedence in the order of operations over an assessment of the general sustainability of the industry. Uh, give me your response to what we've heard this morning from ISS. Well, good morning, David. It's good to be with you. And obviously, we disagree with that recommend recommendation. If you look at our board, we've got one of the strongest boards in corporate America, one that we have been refreshing uh, fairly regularly since I came in uh, in 2017. We've brought on two, six new board members. That's over half the board. We've got board members that have extensive experience, experience running global, complex businesses, capital-intensive businesses, businesses that are grounded in science and technology, a lot of experience in managing companies, large companies, through significant transitions. We've got shareholder uh, perspective, industry perspective, a lot of capital allocation perspective. So we feel very strongly that we have the board uh, in place to help manage this company, not only uh, drive success in today's environment, but position the company for longer-term success as uh, the industry transitions. And I think we're seeing that, actually, uh, with the results of the first quarter as we manage through uh, the pandemic period. And we see uh, the results of the work that we did last year and the work that we've been engaged in since 2017 in reshaping the business, investing in high return projects, um, uh, 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 driving uh, um, simplicity in our business, uh, gaining synergies and reducing costs. And all those are coming together today. We're seeing those in our first quarter results and quietly quite frankly, feel very good about the future that, that lies ahead of us. Yeah, and you, we've had a bit of that conversation, of course, when you joined us uh, not that uh, long ago, uh, and I want to talk more about that. But on this specific fight, because that's kind of what it is, I mean, when they say ExxonMobil, to your point, or at least about the experience of the board, has for years filled its board with former CEOs without any energy experience, which does seem to be at least behind some of this ISS recommendation, how do you respond to that? I think the challenge in this space is understanding the technology that's going to be required uh, to drive the, the industry forward and to support society's ambition to transi transition the energy system to a less carbon intensive uh, energy <clears throat> uh, system. So there's, a, I think, a lot of work in terms of thinking about the, the company, the advantages the company has, the strengths we have, and how we apply those to successfully transition the company as society moves to a lower carbon future. And frankly, the board that we have today has a good understanding of that, understands the complexity associated with moving a business like ourselves through that transition. And as I said, if you look at the plans that we've laid out, the technology that we've been investing in to, to, to address the sectors in society that are hard to decarbonize, we've got a very good plan, a very good technology pipeline uh, to address not only the challenges today, but the challenges that we see coming forward in the future. Well, you know, let's get to that. I mean, we, you know, the last time you joined us, of course, we did spend a decent amount of time talking about carbon capture. I had that conversation as well with the, your board member, Jeffrey Ubbin, uh, not long ago as well. But, you know, sp specific, Darren, to some of the criticisms still, um, uh, for example, um, Engine One says, even by your own limited standards, you've actually gone backwards when it comes to upstream emission intensity. They say ExxonMobil has gone backwards, aims to do worse in 2025 than 2010. Upstream emission intensity has worsened over the last decade, increasing 26 percent. Um, put that in perspective for people uh, so that we can understand at least your perspective on that statistic. Well, we've been very supportive of the efforts uh, globally and, and within the industry to reduce uh, our carbon intensity and carbon emissions. If you look at the progress the company's made since the Paris Agreement has come out, which we supported at the time it came out and supported it as 
been very vocal in our support since then. We've reduced emissions through uh, 2020 from 2016 by 11%. We've got plans in place today that drive emissions down even further and frankly put us on the path consistent with the Paris ambitions and the less than two uh, degree C uh, scenarios. And so I think we've done a lot of work to reduce emissions. More importantly, if you look at what's going to be required for society to achieve the Paris ambitions, there are a number of sectors in the economy critical to the economy and critical to people's uh, lifestyles that are going to be very hard to decarbonize that today don't have solutions. We have been working for decades on technologies and the technologies required to address those hard to decarbonize sectors to help society achieve that lower carbon uh, vision. And so I would tell you that that work that we have been doing is uh, starting to pay off. You know that we've recently announced a very large uh, opportunity in Houston that can make a significant contribution to the Biden administration's recent announcements of reducing, significantly reducing CO2 emissions, make a significant contribution to Houston reaching its net zero by 2050 emissions target. So I would tell you we've been doing the work within our own operations to reduce emissions and doing the work required by society to help them reduce their emissions. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.